All right, it's time for an update. I'll try to keep it concise, so let's move along and get right into it. All right, so since the last update, uh, I wanted to let you know that I have completed sheeting the top of the wing. Uh, I also added the wing tip blocks and shaped them and sanded them, and it looks fantastic. And it's just everything you would hope for <laughs> in a wing. Um, all of the electronics are working great with the connector. Um, the, uh, the airlines are nicely plumbed, ready to receive everything once we cut holes. Uh, so essentially right now what I'm waiting on is the step. Uh, what I'll probably do is skip ahead. So I'm coming up soon where I'm supposed to be mounting the wing uh, and drilling the holes for the, all of that, which will determine how I place the, uh, the intake scoop on the bottom here. This, I'll just grab it. So here's the intake scoop. It goes something like this, but in order to properly fit it, there's another piece of wood that goes here that has to be fit um, and all of that stuff. So there are things coming that are predicated upon other things getting done. One of the things that I can get done uh, along the way is to cut the, I, I can cut the flaps free and uh, prep those there's a there's a recess you have to bevel in there with a with the Dremel tool uh, because of the way that it hinges it's one of those like offset hinge type things but not the point not what I'm trying to explain <laughs> right now so there's that and I also want to try to do some uh, overlapping with the ailerons as well I, th I don't think I've ever showed that technique before so I want to show that as well as do the same thing uh, with the elevators and the rudder. It's a pretty simple technique, uh, just using some 164th inch ply, uh, but that's sort of next on my radar big kind of challenge. All right, so next up is an update on the fuselage. So the vast majority of this was actually already put together for me. Um, everything essentially up to the firewall. This is the main firewall that I just glued on yesterday. But everything here was all boxed and, and glued together. Um, this former here and all of these formers were not glued entirely. Well, this one wasn't glued entirely. It was partially put in, but these were not installed at all. So formers 9, 10, 11, uh, as well as the push rods. Uh, so push rod sleeving is in there. I also have a retract in the tail. So I had to engineer that. On top of that, I had to also engineer the uh, the turning mechanism. So this airplane was not intended to have a retractable tail wheel. And while yes, it's not retracting in the correct direction, I don't care. Uh, I'm going to have a retractable tail wheel, and I'm going to do it the way that I want to do it. So tough toogies. <laughs> uh, on top of that, with the geometry, because of the way things just work in the physical universe we occupy. Um, with the way that the geometry was from the retract versus the uh, uh, non-retractive positions of the tail gear. To do the steering, uh, I used something called a servo saver from Dubro. Uh, it's, I'll put up a picture here so you can see what it looks like up close. It is very helpful in terms of like when... when so the, the situation that I'm facing now is where the the... The tail gear is retracted into the fuselage in one direction it would bind the servo so I wouldn't be able to have full deflection of the rudder so by having the servo saver installed I'm able to have the single servo which saves a lot of weight so again trying to save weight trying to save complexity by having an independent servo yeah it's just it's simpler to do a single servo so that as well um, so then I've started on the uh, the scoop here. That was not done. Uh, there's an exhaust hole here that is going to go here along with the vent. I'm going to make a functional vent. Uh, so I've had to engineer some of that stuff ahead of time because, again, not built into the plans. The other thing that is kind of a disappointment is um, because of the location of the servo tray here, if you note, that is 
essentially immediately below by a, about an inch. Uh, the servo tray is about an inch below where the cockpit would go. I wanted to do a fully 3D printed cockpit interior, even paid for the 3D print models uh, to do that, but I just can't. I can't with this model. Uh, and relocating to perhaps deeper, because there is space, not really. So keep in mind that I am going to be using pneumatic retracts, which requires a tank, and the way that the tank goes, goes right there. You don't necessarily want to move it back because this is metal. Even though it's pretty lightweight, I don't really want to move it back. Um, so yeah, it, it, there's a number of compromises. I'd have to essentially re-engineer the entire center of the airplane if I were to try to get a full cockpit interior. So long story short, I just can't, um, which, is, which is kind of a disappointment. All right, so um, it's now uh, mid-March almost, <laughs> uh, and, and I feel like that it's finally time that I sort of let the cat out of the bag here. Um, starting back in December when I started working on this over the Christmas holiday, uh, because I couldn't get anything in the mail, um, I started developing some severe, severe reactions to something. I had hives all up and down my, my forearms that would burst on their own. Um, it's not like I'm going outside jumping around in poison ivy or poison oak. In addition to the hives that were bursting, uh, they were incredibly itchy, almost like chicken pox, but uh, I had a severe nasal congestion and runny nose and uh, constant sneezing. And, you know, obviously not COVID-19 symptoms, but I, you know, I'm not around anybody and nobody in my family is having these symptoms. So I know it's not a sickness. So, okay, sit down. Let's understand the variables here. I realized that it was only when I was building uh, recently. So what I had been doing before with the wings was all construction. It had absolutely nothing to do with large volumes of CA with all the sheeting uh, and then blending of the balsa wood as well. So I kind of panicked and freaked out and was looking at the variables and realized that I, I, I have a sensitivity at the, at the least and an allergy at the worst to either CA or balsa or both. <laughs> so um, let's go back to variables. So the, the reality of the situation is that uh, a, a hobby store was closing back last summer. Um, and when COVID restrictions were uh, lifted a little bit in the area, I went there to have see what deals I could find. And I was able to pick up some zap glues pretty cheap. And honestly, one of my dirty little secrets is I've never used, ever used hobby grade CA glues. I've just never used them. Um, I've always thought they were overpriced. CA glue is CA glue is CA glue. Um, so I've always been using Loctite, stuff you get at the hardware store. This is what I call medium. And this is what I've been using as thin. So. That's my dirty little secret. The thing with the sheeting was I was using the Zap uh, Medium CA. And let me tell you, the fumes on that stuff, oh my gosh, strongest fumes I've ever experienced in my life. So I thought, well, I've, I must have a sensitive sensitivity to CA glue. And um, so then I, let me, let me get another prop. All right, so for Christmas in January, I was gifted the Micro Bird of Time kit from JH Aerospace. And let me tell you, uh, this was a really fun build. So I used this build as uh, a variable control. After I had mostly healed, this was again in January, late January, I was mostly healed from all of my hives. Um, 
had gotten everything under control, had not used any uh, anti-allergy medication. Uh, I just thought, okay, well, if it's a sensitivity, I'm not going to know unless I change something without going the medication route. So I decided to build the Micro Bird of Time. It's a different set of balsa, so a different kit. It's more recent as well. It's recently cut by Joshua Finn at JH Aerospace. And uh, I decided to use uh, the same CA glue. So I uh, did not use my normal. I used what was left of the medium CA glue to build this uh, airplane and I still had some symptoms but not nearly as strong so I figured okay I still have symptoms so the balsa I wasn't sanding nearly as much <laughs> um, so it's kind of hard again smaller airframe um, but lots and lots of glue so uh, I, I thought, okay, so I, I must be allergic to CA, but also with the balsa dust that I was making, it's still a possibility, which leads me to the next project. So then I went to build the Balsa USA smoothie, and I said, okay, well, I am going to knock out every variable here. It's a new kit uh, from a different supplier, different state, uh, and I'm going to use my normal CA. And I built that entire airplane recently without uh, a mask, <laughs> and I used my normal CA glue, the Loctite stuff, and have not had a single issue yet. Um, so I truly believe at this point that I have some sort of sensitivity to the Zap CA glues, uh, number one. And then number two, uh, I think that the wood from this kit has something wrong with it. So the kit came secondhand to me. In fact, I don't even know if it's secondhand. It may have been third hand or fourth hand or m many other hands. But I don't know how it was stored. Um, clearly, it was at one point taken apart and start to put together. There were pieces glued on that shouldn't have been. So clearly, someone thought they knew what they were doing. But they weren't following the instructions. Um, the, the fuselage, very clearly, they were not following instructions the way the pieces were put together on it. It then sat, in, when I got the kit, it sat in my garage. I didn't even have it in my shop. It sat in my garage for, geez, at least six years, um, if not longer. So between, you know, bugs and fluctuations in moisture because I live in a really humid climate. It's entirely possible that there is some sort of mold or mildew in this wood or this particular vintage of wood that is just destroying my body. So needless to say, I cannot push hard on this project. I just, I can't. Uh, everything that I do, I, 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 I am using this constantly. The only reason I'm not in my shop right now with without this is to make this video because you literally cannot understand anything that's coming out of my face in this mask. So needless to say, uh, I do apologize for the lack of content, but that's literally what I've been going through for the past three months on this project. I've been extremely frustrated and depressed that I can't work on it because I really thought that I would be able to get it done in a reasonable amount of time, but because of what it's doing, literally, kill, it's literally trying to kill me. Um, I just have not been able to work on the project. But that being said, I'm getting close to the point where it's mostly done uh, in terms of the construction. Uh, there's a, there's a bit more to do on the fuselage, but uh, the, the tailplanes are mostly done. The the wings are mostly done. There's a lot of shaping left to do on blocks like the nose, and the the empennage, the turtle deck, uh, things on the fuselage of that nature. So I'm not out of the woods yet. So don't expect a whole lot of content on the Mustang anytime soon. I'm so sorry. I really. I really wish I could, but that's the reality of the situation. However, however, I am nearly to the point where I have to get the motor mounted to the fuselage. 
So with that, I need to start thinking about taking that apart and doing some final assembly with Loctite on the parts of the motor. So hopefully I can get back into talking about the constant speed variable pitch prop mechanism that I've put together on this. Uh, do a little machining video. I've got to drill some holes for the spinner back plate, which I have Fusion loaded up right now to design a guide for me and have that 3D printed. So guys, I know it's this is a really long-winded video of me just talking at you with very little content, but that's the reality. And I know a bunch of people have been busting my chops about this, but the, the reality is that the airplane literally is trying to kill me. And I am, I am fighting an uphill battle with this thing. It will get built. Uh, and and there, uh, I, I just can't do it anymore. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna take a sample of it and send it out to have it tested or anything. I'm just I, this my, this mask has P100 filters, which will filter out viruses. So um, viruses are going to be much smaller than any mold spore. And honestly, using the mask has helped a lot. Um, but I have to literally vacuum everything up every time I build in here. Every time I do it, I have to clean everything up. Otherwise, the, the process starts all over again. Now, taking a Zyrtec does help. Uh, it cleared up the sinuses a lot. It doesn't take away all of the hives and rash, necessarily. Um, so, yeah, that's where we are. So, until next time, guys, keep following me on Instagram. I'm posting little updates here and there whenever I can. Um, there's lots of things to do in the shop. And until next time, stay safe and happy and healthy while you work on your flying works of art.